In this video, I'm going to walk through three examples of solving absolute value equations. So remember that an absolute value equation is just going to be an equation that contains an absolute value expression. So we have here the absolute value of 2x minus 3, and we're saying that equals 11. So remember, absolute value measures distance, so what we're saying is the distance is 11. That means this expression could have been positive 11 or negative 11, so I need to account for both situations. So I'm going to split this up into 2x minus 3 equals positive 11, and 2x minus 3 equals negative 11. And I'm going to solve each one of these equations independently of one another. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So those 3's cancel, so I have 2x equals 14, and when I divide by 2, in the left case, I have x equals 7. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve the right side. So I'm going to add 3, and you'll notice that's what I did over here too. So these 3's cancel, so 2x equals, so negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8. And then I'll divide both sides by 2, and again, that's what I did over here. So my 2's cancel, and x equals negative 4. So it looks like I have x equals negative 4 and positive 7 for solutions. And of course, since it's an equation, I would like to go ahead and plug them back in and kind of just make sure that they work. So let's try the negative 4 first. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Minus 3 is negative 11. Okay, and then when I take the absolute value of negative 11, I get positive 11. So I know that negative 4 will work. Let's do it with 7 also. 2 times 7 is 14, minus 3 is 11, and the absolute value of positive 11 is 11. So they both work out well. In this second example, you'll see that the absolute value expression is not on a side all by itself. So we'll have to start by doing that. We'll need to isolate this expression first. And so, in order to facilitate that, I'll start by subtracting 11 from both sides to cancel that constant. So I have negative 4 times the absolute value of x plus 3 equals, and it looks like, negative 24. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 4. Since this negative 4 is being multiplied by my absolute value expression, so as I divide by negative 4, they'll cancel from the left. And so I'll have the absolute value of x plus 3 equals positive 6. Yeah, now this equation looks a lot like the first one did. So since the absolute value of x plus 3 equals 6, I know that it could have been a positive 6 or a negative 6. So I'll go ahead and divide this up into two separate equations, x plus 3 equals positive 6 and x plus 3 equals negative 6, and I need to account for both values of x. So I'll start by subtracting 3 from both sides, and on the left one I'll get x equals 3. And when I subtract 3 from both sides, on the right I'll get x equals negative 9. So I can say my x values are negative 9 and positive 3, and of course, I'd like to just plug those back into the original equation and just make sure they work. So let's do negative 9 first. Negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6, but it's the absolute value of negative 6, so it's positive 6. Negative 4 times positive 6 is negative 24, plus 11 is negative 13. So my negative 9 worked just fine. So let's try the 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, the absolute value of 6 is 6, times negative 4 is negative 24, so you'll see same situation, plus 11 is negative 13. So that one works as well. So for this equation, we first needed to work our properties of equality and isolate this absolute value expression. And once I did that, then I was able to divide my equation into the two pieces, one for the positive and one for the negative and then I solve them both independently. So in this case, x equals negative 9 and positive 3. In this third and final example that I want to offer in this video, we have the absolute value of 9x minus 4, and I'm going to add 5 to that, and I get 2. 
So let's go ahead and start by isolating my absolute value expression. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 5 from both sides to cancel that constant. So the absolute value of 9x minus 4 equals negative 3. Well, immediately I see I've got a bit of a problem because I cannot take the absolute value of anything and get negative 3. Because remember, absolute value is always non-negative, but it's saying it's negative 3. So that means there are no values of x that I can plug in here to make this true. So I can, right off the bat, just say no solution. So there are three examples for solving absolute value equations. So to recap, you're going to start by isolating that absolute value expression if it's not isolated already. And then you'll split up your absolute value into two separate equations and you'll solve them independently. And then be sure to go ahead and check to make sure your solutions work.